Hey everybody, it's uh, it's me again. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a whole playthrough of the game, but um, I kind of wanted to show you a little more of uh, the mushroom meters here. So right now, what I've done is I've done the the setup. Um, as you can see here in the book, uh, this is the setup, and then here it is there. So there's the layout of all the cards, uh, all the different boards. Um, all the experience tokens and things, uh, dice, and then I'm going to be trying a uh, a three-player game. So uh, a brown, a yellow, and the red there. Um, what's kind of extra great is you get these extra little cards too. So this kind of reminds you what each one or what each token is worth, and then what extra experience points you get at the end of the game if you have the most. Um, these kind of like cheat sheet cards. Uh, intense and loss action, so it gives you the symbol and then what they are, just to make it a little easier reference when you're going through the instruction. Gain actions, uh, must and other actions, and then on the flip side of this is uh, rare actions and symbols. So that's really cool to get that little bit of a cheat sheet. Um, I'll go through the pieces, but uh, one thing I did notice in the book here, uh, so the artists involved here, let's go through the list of the artists. There's only two names that I recognize. Uh, so there's Kate Awake, Gary Beauvais, Rudy Bloody, Mike Buckley, there's that commode minstrels in bullface. Uh, Jason Gillies, uh, Leif Goldberg, Twig Harper, I recognize that name too, uh, musician as well. Joseph Lunders, Manifester, Mandrill, oh sorry, Martyr 3, sorry, let's not read through the camera, um, Carly Patak, Claw Pickles, Buttons, Russo, Craig RPL, Nicholas Toll, Trip Wallen, Wendy Webert, and Wizard333. So a little rundown of all the artists that were involved in this. And then there you go, of course, 2013-14, uh, Nate Hayden. So I guess the first version did come out uh, 2013, so not that long ago. I thought it was a little longer than that. So um, let's just go through the parts. So this here is, is uh, the action board. Um, this one here is called uh, the nervous system board. Um, and uh, let me just read here. The nervous system is, d is divided into two sections. So that's, I guess, nervous system, and then that's f the focus side, I believe, is what it says there. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, the small cubes. Yeah, so that's that one, and then C. Uh, this is the focus board um, and in I'm going to be playing a three player game so in a three player game uh, apparently you don't use that last one so it's like there's only that many cubes or that many spaces uh, before you get pushed off of the board and I think that ties into these um, when it's time to gain one of those whoever is whoever has the most on this board I think gains the token and then it starts again I, I believe but we'll see once I start playing um, the environment cards are here uh, the share and talking cards are here and those relate to this board here which is the the talking board so I haven't done it yet but everybody starts with a token in the middle there and then at a certain point later in the game I think it's near the end of the game there's a um, there's a, a square where you play this board um, these are all the mantra tokens uh, and again those come into play because I've sort of cheated ish and seen somebody play the game I know they come into play when you start unfolding the board um, and you hit certain spots and if you hit those spots and you have one of these tokens uh, you collect what's on the token as far as experience points go the interesting thing about these mantra tokens is that depending on how many people are playing there's one less 
but it never goes lower than two. So even if it's a two person game, you still only use two of each. So if you are playing a five player game, there's four of each. So it's always going to leave somebody, um, if, it, if you do end up getting through the whole stack of them, it's always gonna leave somebody uh, without one of them where then they'll be penalized when you hit those spots because I believe you experience those spots as a group as a group uh, it's not an individual and then they have a another little handy card there um, the the mantra card they're just telling you what each one is a b c d and e uh, what's on the flip side no nothing on the flip side just the back of the card so that's helpful as well too um, these are the personal path cards as I've said before when you go through you can they suggest for a first game uh, first couple of games you don't do the personal paths I'm gonna do them anyway uh, just because I want to see how that plays as well so your little personal path personal journey uh, those tokens and let me just look here flipping a page um, so these are the place uh, place action tokens so on the board, there's these squares here that have an X and that relates to those. So again, again, in a beginner game, there's a couple of the tokens I've taken out. They have a, I think it's a, an A symbol. Yeah, they have, there's, a, there's tokens that have a little red A. They suggest taking them out of the game and I did take those out of the game, excuse me, um, just to make this side of it a little simpler. So basically what I did is just shuffled these, uh, flipped them upside down. It says to for the first section, the A and B, you place, you turn one over and place it on those spots. So that's what I've done. And then I believe later on in the game, um, you only turn one over when you actually hit the spot. So I guess it doesn't matter either way. Uh, this allows you though to see what's coming so you can avoid it. Whereas later on in the game, I guess, it's, it's gonna be a mystery as to what it is because I think it's the same with anything. There's gonna be some good and some bad as far as uh, what you'll be able to experience on these spots. Um, what else didn't I cover? I showed you these, but these are the different tokens. Um, and then there are the tokens for the end of the game. So whoever has the most personal paths gets an extra three. Whoever has the most of these fractals, I think they are. It's really interesting because some of the terminology, for example, like these fractals, it's, it's kind of your ability to comprehend a bigger idea or a bigger p picture. So, but you only get these little, little shards of the big picture. Sorry, there's no light there. There we go. Um, you're only getting a, a small piece of the overall picture, but at least you're starting to be able to understand it. So whoever has the most of those at the end uh, gets that token. There's big ones here that are 10, but they're actually worth five experience points, seeing as each little fractal is worth a half a point. There's ones in there marked five, and they're actually worth two and a half each. Um, Awakening, I believe, is what these ones are called, the Awakening tokens. Um, and then the dice that comes into play at various points. So each player starts out uh, let me just sort this out here. So each player starts out with a, let's see if that's gonna, if you can be able to see that. They're small, but uh, let me just hold it. Wow, it's difficult. Um, hopefully that's focusing. Unfortunately, this doesn't have an auto focus option. Uh, so I've always got to find that zone. So these are breathing tokens. So on this side is you're, you're basically not breathing, not not breathing, but when you flip it over, you go into deep breathing, which, uh, you know, calms you down, which comes into play later as well when you have to give up experience tokens. If you have this flip to this side, instead of getting rid of experience, you can just flip this back over to the not breathing side. So each player gets one of those. Um, each player gets these talking tokens. Uh, these are the ones I was talking about that go onto the board, which we may as well do right now. Um, the colors on these is a bit odd. So they don't quite match the colors of everything else that's on, but ultimately it's fine. I'll, I'll figure it out. So they all go there stacked on top of each other. Um, you get eight of these larger cubes. Two of these, I believe these are the personal path 
uh, octagons and then there was two each of these tinier cubes so whoever was going first which I've just determined is going to be this guy he's got the number one token he's the first one to place onto this track and then everybody after him goes and then the last person that placed here becomes the first to place over here and then backwards from there so that's where those extra tokens went to um, and then of course everybody gets their cards I didn't shuffle or anything because uh, there's not much point so I, I, I hope I think I, I have some more room here to move everything over um, because this should be enough room as far as like the board unfolding I'll probably end up sliding everything over so there you go there's the kind of initial setup uh, yeah back again um, I just figured I may as well show you the starting of the game too so you'll see these spaces here that have like a border around them those are uh, must do spaces so if you're here for example and you only have a three left a, a card with a number three on it you can only move two because you have to experience each one of these within that path the player playing the player whose turn it is experiences each of these spots first um, you don't have to play a card to move to the next ones you just resolve this one move to the next one resolve it move to the next one resolve it so that's kind of where we're at for the first part of the game so like I said Brown is is going first um, so the first spot here this is it's just I don't know, I think there's going to be just so many nice layers to this. I'm really looking forward to it. So the, the fire is the first spot that we're on. Um, and according to the book, uh, let's go to the book. Uh, there's fire. So fire, uh, this is a common space of rest and refocus for the eaters. Um, you, kind of, you kind of snap out of it to some degree and... and realize that you're sitting around a fire so you kind of come come back into the group and you, you rejoin your your surroundings basically so um uh in player order all players must play one mood card from their hand players collect the items featured next to the fire on the card played the card is discarded if a player has no cards in hand before fire action he takes all cards into his hand as normal the items of the resting fire and other features of the cards are mentioned below so because we're starting the game um, that's what we've experienced first so for example let's look so this is where this comes into play from what I was talking about before so there's the number three card for example and let's hold this up so there's not much glare from the light wow anyway somewhere in there is focus I think so there's the fire symbol and then there's two uh, uh, bodies so probably nervous system um, so we'll see what that means and like they said uh, it's gonna be a game of kind of going and just learning all the symbols and all the terminology so there's that for example um, here's another one uh, with the fire symbol so like an awakening token and it looks like a mantra beside it so you can gain a mantra here's one that has two cubes I think that means you can move on the nervous system board I believe but we'll find out uh, one cube uh, oh, maybe that's flipping your breathing tile, or maybe that's your breathing tile. That's moving to deep breathing. I'm not sure what that one means. And there's collect a fractal. So right out of the gate, um, it's playing a card and, and collecting something or uh, being able to achieve a certain task right out of the gate. And the next, so then once we've all resolved that one, that first player again, would just move the token to the next spot and we'd experience that one and that one looks like a multiple choice kind of thing a cube a nervous system or a um, an awakening I think is what it is there so that's kind of how the, go the game would start out um, yeah so I'm going to try that and I, I just thought I would kind of show you the 
give you the whole full intro from the setup to the first move. Um, and I think that's going to be something to keep in mind that making sure that we experience all those spaces and uh, don't pass them by and don't play cards, that sort of thing. So, so there we go. Okay. Okay, so I've decided on the moves for people here. So um, the symbols here by the fire are uh, you, you move your cube um, two spots up in the nervous system. Um, this one here, I can do this one here since he's right there. Uh, he's decided that he's going to flip his or her token to uh, the deep breathing. And red over here has decided that, uh, so this one gives you a choice. You can take uh, two of the, I believe they're enlightenment um, tokens, or you can take a, a mantra token. So she's gonna decide to take a, a mantra token here. So um, let's see which is a good one. Let's try B, because if we get to that spot, it's going to allow us to jump up to onto this track here so we're gonna take one of those um, so then like I said Brown is going to move up to in this track here so that's Brown so they're gonna move one two just like that um, I don't quite know what the benefit of this is yet other than I believe this side is kind of judging how calm you are so if you're in the red you're kind of or below the red you're in full-blown panic attack and I believe there's penalties because there's penalties on things that move you down the tracks um, and if you're at red and move lower or you can't move off the board obviously so if you ever get a token or a spot where you have to decrease this value and you don't have the room to move that just means you're going to lose uh, experience tokens or, or something else from your hand which is going to make it more difficult for you to ultimately achieve your goal at the end. Um, so that's all that happened on this turn and then that next turn is the same thing basically. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, peaceful, wow that got blue all of a sudden there. Uh, peaceful, you must experience Players, beginning with current player, must choose one of the three items to take into their supply. Either one awakening, one energy, or one focus. So yeah, either one of the awakening tokens. Um, I believe that's moving up. One on here. Or moving up one on the focus board and that's the next spot that we have so then everybody will make that decision um, I kind of want to have each of them make a different one so since the red player took the mantra on this time let's go with brown brown is going to decide to take one of these uh, one of the focus tokens there so let's do that for brown um, yellow is going to decide to move up one here and then red will decide to move up one here um, there's kind of no rhyme or reason as far as well I guess there I guess there is I mean I think the thing for me playing this right now is I'm just trying to get a feel for the game so I really want to have each of the uh, each of the players take different actions. I don't want everybody to just gain an awakening token because I want to see what happens to each player as we move through the, the board and the game uh, to see how these things reflect later on in the game I think will be interesting. So yeah, okay, uh, that's, that's it. So what do you know there? I think uh, already <laughs> I've made a mistake. It's it's interesting. The the book is a little it's it's a lot of information to fit into a book. Um, so it is a little confusing. Uh, a little bit of a breakdown of 
I mean, it, it sort of does it, but for some reason it seems a little, a little vague as to what's what. And maybe that's just me, but what I believe happened just here was this was not, this is the nervous system. These, I believe, are called the focus boards. Um, so I think when that action there was uh, gain one in the nervous system, that means you can bump up one here or one there, I believe is how that goes. And adding a cube is what the other one is. So then you can add a cube either to the uh, time board or the shaman's drum board um, is I believe what that meant and that sort of makes sense because on the square I know that's really tiny but on the square is a little or on the spot is a little cube which reflects the cube up there and up there and in here there's no cube but there is the nervous system so that that makes more sense so um, I, I think it's uh, just a matter of slowing down and understanding everything. Um, so in that case, I think that was, uh, so red got that and red was going to add a piece, right? Cause yellow bumped up, brown took a that. So yeah, so we're gonna add red to one of these. Um, so we'll come over here and grab one of our cubes. Um, I, again, it's early days, so I don't know what the benefit is going to be yet, but I'm going to add one to the time uh, to the time board here. So that gives red two, yellow one, and brown one of them. Um, that face doesn't come up for quite a while. Do I even see it here? Uh, oh, right there. So there's the time. There's that one there. So it's it's quite a ways away. It's all the way around before we, we even get to the flipped board yet. So uh, there we go. All right, let's hope we have that sorted. So we've landed on a spot that... Um, or yellow has moved us to a spot that's an environment card and the environment cards are here so what you do is you turn it over which we have and um, there's three choices so a three is a focus uh, a two is a nervous system and a one is a lose um, an enlightenment or a, one of those tokens basically so what happens now is each player plays a card the matching number is going to gain or lose them something um, you also have an option each deck has a, a card that has a zero on it so you can play and in this case the last person probably will end up playing the zero card because the last person I'm sure will be given this leftover so if you play that zero card that means you don't gain or lose anything for that round. So we start with player number one. Uh, player number one is yellow. So I think um, I would like player number one to, uh, I don't know, I have a feeling I'd like player number one to gain a focus cube because I'd like to put something on that shaman's drum there. So let's play a three from uh, the yellow player and we'll take one of his cubes and put them there and and again uh, does it say I'm pretty sure Jason lands on an environment action and draws an environment card. The eaters have become cold. Each player must play one card. Jason plays a two and earns an energy. He raises his, his intensity energy. Ariel can only play a one and loses an awakening. Taylor, Taylor plays, Tyler plays a three and places a focus cube at the bottom of the shaman drum influence track. This placement pushes Jason off the top of the track. 
Wendy also plays a 2 and moves her moving forward energy up 1. Uh, if a player plays a card for an item he is to remove and does not own that item, nothing happens. He just discards the card as normal has no further penalty. So you can do that. Nowhere does it say that you can't play the same card as somebody else. So I guess that sort of changes that a little bit because just because he's played a 3 doesn't mean now that nobody else can play a 3. It's just, I guess, whatever choice you want to do. And as it said there... Um, if you have nothing to lose, and that's the only card that you have, then there's no extra penalty. So that's good to know as well too, so then you don't have to waste a zero card. The zero cards, if the next person was to play a zero card, we would stay on that space and experience that space again. The only caveat to that is that um, if you have already experienced that space, you cannot re-experience a space with a zero card. So in this particular incidence, because this affected all of us, we would just stay there and nothing would happen. Um, so there would be nothing to re-experience. Now, if we went on to, say, the awakening spot there that has a one, the next person could then play a zero card. Um, because I believe that, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. I, th I believe that means that the, the person that's played that turn only experiences that space as opposed to everybody experiencing it. So that would be a benefit, for example, but in here there would be no benefit to saving a zero. Um, but I guess that would be a thing if you wanted to save your zeros. You could just play, in this case, a one if you didn't have any of those enlightenment or awakening tokens, uh, awakening rather, not enlightenment, awakening tokens the, to lose, then it wouldn't affect you. Um, so then red, let's get red on the nervous system track here. So let's play a two from red. We'll see what red's got here. Red's got two twos. So let's, uh, let's play this one here a number two and that gives him a bump up on uh, on this track here so let's again trying to do things differently than everybody else let's uh, bump him up one on this side of the uh, nervous system board so that ends red's take on this whole affair and brown is the last one left um, I think Brown has three twos, uh, only one three. I'd like to save that three for Brown. So let's do a two for Brown as well, which again is a bump up on the nervous system. Um, let's try this one right there for Brown, a two. That'll go there. And we'll bump Brown up on this side as well too. So Brown's doing fairly well on his uh, on his trip so far. Um, yeah, as much as I said that I, I won't be showing every moment of this game, it, it seems like so far, <laughs> moving three spots, um, you've pretty much seen everything there is. Um, yeah, so I'll I'll keep going here and. Uh, I'll try not to flood you with a, a seven hour video of uh, Mushroom Eater's gameplay, I promise.